humans have spent decades developing methods to see more than what our eyes perceive. One of the greatest examples is this first X-ray image. It was taken in 1895 by Willem Röntgen, and the hand in the picture is of Röntgen's wife. If you wonder what that black blob is, this is her ring. This image paved the way to what we know today as medical imaging, which helps physicians diagnose patients without surgery. X-ray imaging is commonly used to see inside our bodies. You all know about the harmful aspects of X-ray radiation, but in fact it suffers from another problem which is at least as important. A lot of times the information that X-ray imaging provides us is not specific or sensitive enough, and as a result patients have to undergo more invasive procedures. Here's why. What we call light is really electromagnetic waves. An X-ray is just a particular part of that spectrum with a specific wavelength or color. Other parts of that spectrum are microwaves, which are used in microwave ovens, and radio waves, which are used for communication. But the most interesting part of that spectrum is the visible range, in which our eyes are sensitive. Evolution has made our eyes, and so many other animals' eyes, sensitive in that narrow, near-visible range. And that is no coincidence. The reason is, this is where there is a lot of interaction between light and matter. This interaction is incredibly rich and results in all these wonderful colors we see around us. In the visible range, different materials look different from one another, unlike other parts of the spectrum, like X-ray, in which most things look alike. So we want to be able to see inside objects, like this bird, but do it in the visible range, so that we'll have information about the types of materials inside, rather than just bones. And how do we do that? So unlike X-ray, I don't have to use my or my wife's hand. Today, we have engineered materials like this that mimic the optical properties of human tissue. This thing mimics the optical properties of very thick, fat tissue. It's almost as thick as my hand. And we want to see through that. So let's take a simple example. This is the letter A. And we're going to hide it with this tissue. Now, I guess you're not surprised that you don't see the A, but why can't you? So to start, let's take it back for a second and think about why this is so important. This is an ultrasound image of my son when my wife was five months pregnant. She suffered from some pains, and the doctors decided to do an ultrasound. Now, ultrasound and x-ray suffer from the same issue. They provide us limited information about the types of tissues they interact with. So a normal, a normal fluid or a bleeding might look similar. The doctors did see some abnormality while performing this ultrasound, but they were not sure what the reason was. It was only four months later, when our son was born, that the doctors were able to know what happened by physically looking at the placenta. Don't worry, we had a happy ending. My wife is here with my son, and they're both perfectly healthy. So how can we solve such problems? We have to develop new technologies that would uh, provide physicians with more information, and we have to take advantage of the interaction between light and matter in the visible range. So let's start by placing this flashlight and our mask, shaped like the letter A, and our camera. Now, cameras use lenses to focus light from the object we want to see onto their sensor, which allows them to capture a sharp image like that. Light is composed of fundamental particles we call photons, and when there is nothing in their way, they travel in a straight line from the object to the camera. If we now place our tissue between the object and the camera, the camera cannot focus on the object anymore, so what we'll see is a very blurry and distorted version of the object. This is an actual image we got while doing this experiment. Now I told you all about the great interaction between light and matter in the visible range. Everything comes with a price. And the price of this interaction is the scattering of light. When the photons interact with the tissue, they move around, which causes them to scatter. What's really interesting about this example is that the tissue hardly absorbs anything. That means that almost all the light that goes into the tissue comes out on the other side and reaches the camera. And yet, we still cannot see through it. Now, trying to overcome scattering has been one of the biggest challenges in optics for more than a century. And what's interesting here is that the, the, 
the scattering is coding information about the tissue and about the hidden object in a very complicated way. So, so I, I think we're coming to a time when we might have a solution to this problem. Today we have amazing new sensors that can capture information about photons in new ways. And recently, in my research group, we started working with a camera that can measure the photon's time of arrival to the sensor. And to see how that might help us, let's zoom into the tissue and see how light propagates through it. So very few photons are going to travel in a straight line. Since this is the shortest path, they arrive first. And some photons are going to scatter just a little bit, so they arrive a little later. The majority of the photons are going to scatter a lot, hundreds and thousands of times before they finally reach the sensor. Of course, they arrive much later. This information in time is very rich, and it can help us to overcome the scattering. So we actually did this experiment and used our camera to measure the photon's time of arrival to the, to the sensor. Now, since light is the fastest thing we have in our universe, we have to slow down this movie a lot. We have to slow it down by a factor of 10 billion, and this is what it looks like. And during that time the movie is playing, light is bouncing around between the Earth and the Moon more than five times. This movie is really interesting because each frame shows us photons that traveled in the tissue different path lengths. So they interacted with the tissue in a different way. This information is very, very diverse. And that diversity can help us to overcome the scattering because it allows us to distinguish between the contribution from the hidden object and from the tissue. So we actually use this intuition to write an algorithm that simultaneously evaluates the optical properties of the tissue and the hidden object. And here's the result. So effectively, we computationally invert the optical scattering, which allows us to recover the hidden object like this and other meaningful parameters like how thick the tissue is and how much optical scattering it causes. I was really excited when I first got this result because it literally shows that we can see through that tissue using near visible wavelength. Since then we've imaged more complicated objects through even thicker tissues. So the next time that you hold your hands to cover your eyes or to hide something, you should remember that we might be able to see through them. <laughs> uh, this is what our current hardware looks like, so it's going to take some time until we can do this. Um, but what is important to note here is that everything you see operates in the visible part of the spectrum. That means that the same technology trends that enabled cameras in our cell phones would someday enable these new imaging techniques. In fact, photons carry an immense amount of information, and we're just starting to scratch the surface in measuring and making sense of it. In the future, we will literally see more, like looking inside fruits and vegetables to know if they're ripe or not. Of course, we have more serious applications, <laughs> like <laughs> brain imaging, seeing through clouds, and seeing through fog for autonomous driving in any weather. And of course, medical imaging, which means less x-rays and CTs, reduction in invasive biopsy procedures, and overall better diagnoses that are more informative and at the right time. Thank you. <laughs>